Hi and welcome back to the channel. I'm Cypher and today I'm showing you something that I started as a small experiment and kind of turned into its own project. I originally wanted to play around with RFID and NFC because I thought it would be a great feature to add to my ESP32D project. But as I kept tweaking and testing, it turned into something bigger. So now we have the null tag. As of recording this, I haven't decided whether I share the source code or not. It's super experimental right now, lots of rough edges, a few bugs, but I still think it's worth showing you what it can do. Let's talk about the software. The OLED menu is simple, one header and 10 different features you can access using the buttons or over serial. Each one lets you interact with tags in a different way from reading and cloning to dumping memory or even testing for vulnerabilities. First feature is for reading the card, which is your go-to function when you're just getting started. Tap it, place a tag near the reader, and it will show you the tag's UID and a bit of basic info on the OLED screen. Next up, we have clone. This lets you copy the UID and basic structure of a tag and then emulate it using the PN532. It's great for testing whether a tag clone will actually work on a reader or for making a backup of something like an office badge. Now it won't clone protected data unless you already have the keys. And tag emulation is limited. MyFair Classic works, but you are not going to spoof a secure desfire tags this way. Race card does exactly what it sounds like. It wipes a writable tag back to blank state. It works best on my fair classic tags and it's super handy if you're reusing test cards. Dump card is for when you really want to dig into what a tag is storing. It reads every block of memory on a my fair classic tag including access bits, keys, of course if you have them, and user data. The OLED walks you through the progress block by block and it can be exported via serial or SD card if you got that enabled. Card info is your quick scan utility. You can scan a tag and null tag identifies the type, classic, end tag, ultra light or this fire, along with some useful details like size, lock status and whether the tag has the infamous magic backdoor. Decode access is for breaking down the security layout of my fair classic tags. It reads the sector trailer and decodes the access bit, so you can see what each block allows, like which one readable, writable, or lockdown. Root key tries common default keys on MyFair Classic tags. The stuff like this, the kind of keys people forgot to change. If null tag find a match, it show you the key and let you read that sector. It's a slow. We are not talking rainbow tables or anything fancy. And if the tag uses non-standard keys, it's probably not going to work. Plus, some readers will lock out the tag if you fail too many times. So yeah, it's useful, but it's also a reminder if you're using default keys on a production tags, maybe don't. Next, we have Jam Reader. This one's kind of wild. Because it floats the 13.56 MHz band with rapid malformed tag responses. Basically, it pretends to be a misbehaving MyFair Classic tag that won't shut up, which can throw off less robust readers. Finally, we have my favorite disrupt tag, aka tag virus. This writes corrupt access bits across MyFair Classic tags, turning it into a kind of RFID gremlin. You flash it, with invalid data and when you scan it on certain readers, they freeze or just crash. In the code, I make it so it writes things like all FFs or zeros or just junk data to all 16 sectors. The OLED shows you the progress and once it says disrupt written, the tag's ready. I test this one on RC522 module and yeah, instant lockup. This video is sponsored by NextPCB. If you're working on a custom hardware project, NextPCB is a solid choice for PCB manufacturing. They offer high quality boards, 
fast production times, and support for everything from simple prototype to advanced multi-layer designs. Placing an order is simple. Just upload your Gerber files, choose your board specs like size, layers, and color, and hit submit. They handle the rest, and you can track the entire process right on their site. Whether you're a maker, a hobbyist, or working on a full product, Next PCB can help you bring your ideas to life. Check them out through the link in the description, and thanks for the Next PCB for supporting the channel. Now let's take a quick look at the hardware that makes Noltag. At the core, we've got ESP32. It handles all the logic and communication that's paired with the RFID module connected over SPI. For the display, I'm using a 0.96 inch OLED display. It's a small, low power and runs over I2C. Power-wise, the setup includes an AM1117 voltage regulator, which steps down battery voltage to a steady 3.3 volt. Speaking of batteries, I'm using a TP4056 for charging. It handles lithium-ion charging and super handy for making this thing portable. For programming, there is a CP2102 USB to UART bridge on board. It's how I flash new firmware and talk to the ESP32 from a computer. And at last we have PN532 RFID NFC module connected over SPI, which reads most common 13.56 MHz tags like MyFair Classic. And I think that's about it for this project. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. For me personally, this project was basically a sandbox for learning RFID. Thanks for watching this video. If you like my projects and videos, make sure to subscribe and I see you guys in the next video.